There's been a lot of talk about within education, a lot of the CEC, DFE, um, and Gatsby, etc., etc. A lot of collaboration from an education perspective, but maybe it's not from a, an em employer perspective. I think the time's right for employers and business to now yeah. start collaborating and not working in silos yeah. because yeah. that's when you're solving those the, the, the bigger problem of getting yeah. people into work. My mum is an artist, but she was actually like guiding me away from fashion. Like she was probably like, I don't really want you to get into it. Like it's too competitive. She was like, Are you sure you want to get into that? Do you know what I mean? At the time that I applied for uni, I was trying to stay comfortable. I wasn't really pushing myself out of my uh, like comfort zones, but it worked out really well actually because I've got to like learn this software, and this is kind of like this is where I see myself going in the future using this software. And I feel like if I like, Teesside's one of the only uh, universities at the moment that's really pushing the use of this software. Um, so I feel like if I did go to a different university, I might have missed out on this opportunity, really. It's, it's actually quite hard being up north to find all these people, especially if it's just fashion or photography and stuff like that. There's, there's not that many people doing a lot of things. And it's really, I feel like it's really hard to really find this underground community up north. So like when I find somebody who's doing photography or I find somebody making clothes, I'm going to latch onto them because there's not that many people up north. You still have people doing great bits, but it's, 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 it's you know, it's rarer to, rarer to find. When you see like watch documentaries from fashion designers or speak to people that are in that industry, you think, I don't like well-spoken and like I'm not like yeah um I definitely had that worry that I wasn't gonna fit in but I think when you start digging deep and actually speaking to people more people are working class more than you think they are a lot of people don't really like when I've spoken to other people who don't really like where they live and I absolutely love Newcastle so the benefits of studying here is just being up north where I'm comfortable in Newcastle um, yeah I think there's a lot to be celebrated here. The Baltic often have like a lot of really really well um, put together exhibitions and they're really good to go see as an art student because they're really modern and um, they're really like high budget and we also have like little local museums which have like more like fine art and paintings like the Lang um, and that's really good to be able to kind of walk about they're all like really like in right in the city centre so they're all like a 20 minute walk away from each other. Music is the one thing I don't think there's anything else like it that brings so many different people together in one space and like for somewhere like this it's so important because it gives all of us a home do you know what I mean to come and connect with each other. So Sax Radio is a radio show for local and up and coming emerging artists. There's so many good local artists on it that are unrepresented from different backgrounds, ages, you know, genders. It's amazing. I love it. There's a real pride in, um, in our community and in the Northeast as a whole. So celebrating local talent is received so well and that ability to engage with our local customer to tell them what we're doing and to really celebrate those local success stories. In terms of the North East, there are many sectors where young people feel like if they want to be successful in that industry, they have to move out of the North East. And a lot of that's because as, as a region, we do have a lot of history in terms of very traditional based roles. So, in terms of the creative industries, London is a big draw for a lot of young people because they, they, that's where they see a lot of the opportunities on, on, the, on uh, social media. I would like to go to like London or like maybe Manchester, like a main city, to go do my education. It is really good up here. There is a lot of opportunity still, but um, 
I personally think that it's really great to be able to have the opportunity to move away from home and have that like initial experience of independence and um, it's not that I'm like desperate to get away from home because it is really good here but it's also like I think it's such a great opportunity to be able to find that first um, step to like independence. I will be honest that some of our students because we are in an area of so social deprivation that another year at university would mean that they just wouldn't be able to go so yeah. we do need to make yeah. sure that we are not kind of like hindering people from going on to Financial. higher education so that they, they, they think, oh, it is just going to be three years that I've got to fund because it can make a massive difference that extra yeah. year. And it's, it's a bit frustrating, really, because it shouldn't be a luxury, should it? To do? It should not. It shouldn't I mean, be. foundation's free, though, isn't yeah. it? If you're under yeah. 19 when you apply, so you yeah. go straight into... And I often say to students, you're better off doing the foundation that's free. Obviously, you're going to have to still pay your mum and dad rent or work yeah. part-time. Yeah. But that way, you're not having to take the loan on for the degree yeah. and then the decide, one, yeah. I don't want fashion, yeah, I want absolutely. jewellery, or yeah. I don't want... And that happens a lot. And I sort of saw the need for young people just needing that little bit more. Um, so then I started designing workshops and then started going into more and more schools um, with the workshops and breaking down the industry into, in terms of different skills. And then it kind of came apparent that they needed something a little bit more long term. So I decided then to write a program um, and that started going into schools and getting really popular. We just kind of made it bigger, um, sort of looked at what the students were asking for. But of course, they didn't really know, you know, what, what they wanted and you don't know what you don't know. What we've been able to track is around about 82% of the students that have done ties have gone on to the creative industries in sh some shape or form. So that could be, you know, either going to study English and going into script writing or studying fashion communication and going off to be um, social, social media marketing managers, all sorts of different things. I've been talking to employers um, who, you know, the, the makers that, that are out there, you, you know, very much based around, around you. Um, who are saying they have order books that are full for the next year to three years, but nowhere near enough staff to actually be able to deliver. Mm. So they're actually turning away work, which is is terrible. But you know, when when we're looking, especially with everything that's happening economically at the moment, I think that's like going to industry and kind of figuring out what you kind of like. <clears throat> I realise obviously I like design, but. I never want to like sort myself down to one thing. I'm very open to be like, I will do, maybe not everything, but like I'll do bits and bobs just to kind of like figure it out. Cause I feel like we don't need to, we're all so young. We don't need to like exactly. yeah. Yeah. have something. We want to be this at here. Like I'd hate that. Like I love being able to like maybe move around and like even different places. Like I've always definitely wanted to work for myself. So this is like actually my second business. I've got um, like a fashion design. Uh, like brand as well, uh, which I kind of work on alongside this. Um, I think being your own boss is like the best, the best feeling. In trying to make money and start businesses while being at uni and studying fashion, this was just the thing what suited me, especially denim, the feeling, the texture, everything like that, especially how it takes like different dyeing processes and stuff like that. I think there's so much you can do with denim. That's why how my approach is to selling jeans is Every person who comes, it's a brand new tailored experience. The jeans get fully tailored. We don't redo the same colour. We don't redo the same design. It's obviously metaverse and digital is becoming the new, like sort of, like the future almost. Um, and obviously companies who are wanting to get involved in stuff like that, it's really difficult for them to design garlands from scratch when they've got no sort of design or even pattern and knowledge. So then that's kind of like where I come in. So they'll look for um, individuals or businesses to buy garments like this from to in, like convert into like meta garments. We took a trip up to uh, Berghaus in Sunderland uh, last week where we saw uh, like the core team up there doing what they do, um, showing us how they use the program in like their workflow. And it was, uh, yeah, it was really exciting to see that that, that's, that should be me soon. <laughs> Uh, so here in the northeast, our business community is actually around 80% small to medium-sized businesses, so smaller businesses here in the northeast, which is which is great. However, a lot of young people are still 
wanting to engage more with bigger, larger corporations. So a lot of the work that we're trying to do is engage with smaller SME businesses, uh, individuals who are self-employed, entrepreneurs, and get them in front of young people so that young people understand that there's opportunities in smaller businesses just as much as there are in larger corporate businesses. It's tough is making our industry, the manufacturing side of our industry, an, an interesting and exciting place that people want to work in again. So there's, I think we've got two very separate things here. Now, they're obviously interlinked. That that making careers in, in manufacturing, talking about being a sewing machinist, garment tech, etc., etc., is going to take a long time. Um, but there are things that we can do. There are parts of the community that we can work with, and we've got examples of them, and Bernie's done it, and we've done it, that can make a difference. But, you know, let's not kid ourselves, it's damn hard work. We had a, sp a talk with Harris Tweed when we were doing um, the Modern Artisan and they like weave basically wool fabric but like they've got weavers and their like youngest person was about 60. They were saying it's like dying out kind of thing and it's kind of like you, we need to like reintroduce sort of the traditional craftsmanship um, skills because I think it is a dying breed and essentially if without that you don't really have a fashion industry because they're the ones making it. Um, and I just love that because, I, I don't know, I just like making. I think it's like really sort of rewarding to have made something with your hands. Um, but I think it's still, like like you say, like the sort of the way that it's going is sort of more digital, 3D, and it, I 100% agree. Like I do think it is going that way. But I think you can't also forget about the traditional ways of working because you need it really like without it you can't like the whole industry would like come to a standstill if people just didn't carry on sewing. I think people my age and well this sort of generation um, I think we've got it too easy I think everything's just a it's just a completely different generation it is quite sad but I think for me personally sometimes I don't have the patience to sit and sew or learn I, I do need a lot of help with that but um, it is quite sad. I think, I think there must be a regeneration. We need something to happen. I think um, younger people to get back into it. I'm really interested in kind of the making process and the research, especially with like sculpting things and um, like I do like quite like the fine art aspect of things too. So I'm not necessarily just into like the sewing of like fashion and fashion and that kind of thing, but like I do like to explore with like all the different kind of things that you can do. And I know that with the foundation art course, it's not like so specialized where you can, um, even if you do specialize in one area, you can like flick between the like four areas and there's 3D um, fashion and then fine art and um, visual communications. And you can use all aspects and like they let you use any of the resources um, to incorporate that into your project. So it's not restrictive at all. Young people don't don't know what's on their doorstep. They don't know about these great opportunities and businesses here in the Northeast. And that's what we're trying to do. That's why the work that we're doing is so important to continue, especially after the pandemic, because it's about helping young people understand what's on their doorstep. And actually they can be successful being born and bred in the Northeast and have an opportunity here. I think Newcastle just needs to be put on the map a bit more. There needs to be something big needs to happen. And I think that, I think that we're on the cusp of that. Thank you.